Question 9 was 0.28 in pounds times by 7. So that's the same as 28p times by 7. And if you get rid of the decimal point, some people will find it easier. So you're doing 28 times by 7. Just like in question 8, we're going to split this 28 up into 20 and 8. After all, that's what 28 is. It's 20 and 8. And we're going to times that by 7. So we're doing this grid. And just like last time, we're going to ignore any noughts to start with. We sort of put those on afterwards. 7 times by 2, that's 14. That's something you need to know from your tables. If you don't know, you write down 7 twice and you add it up by counting on your fingers. Between those two numbers, there's one zero, it's here. And then I need to put that zero back on. Over here, I've got to do 7 times by 8. That's 56. You need to know it from your times tables or work it out by adding up on your fingers. You need to get that answer. Then with this method, the numbers you have in here, they need to be added together. So 140 and 56 need adding together. Make sure you line them up on the right. Nothing in 6 is 6. 4 and 5 is 9, and 1 and nothing is 1. So I've got an answer here of 196 pence, because my question I did was in pence. But I need to change it back to pounds. So just like before, if you're going from pence to pounds, you put a decimal point in two places from the end. So the decimal point will go in there, and you'll have for that one, one pound 96. The next question was... 2,250 and a half divided by 7. This was a harder question. Here we go. 2,250 and a half divided by 7. It still should have been possible. Useful to change that half into a decimal. To change it into a 0.5. Dividing with decimals is easier than dividing with fractions. And because it's a divide, we'll do it the bus stop method, just like we did before. So this number here goes in under the bus stop. And the number I'm dividing by goes outside the bus stop. And just like last time, because I'm dividing by 7, I want the 7 times table. So I will write the 7 times table down. Hopefully, students have learnt it. If not, you write it down by adding on 7 each time to get the next one. So the first thing I do now is 7 into 2. 7 won't go into 2. 2 is too small. So I put a 0 there. And remember, every time you put a 0 there, this number goes up here. So I've now got 22. And I'm doing 7s into 22. So if I use my 7 times table, 21 is the number just below 22. And that's the third one down. So 7 goes into 22 three times. And three sevens were 21. And the gap, or the remainder, from 21 to 22 is 1, which goes here. Now it's 7s into 15. Again, from here, I know that two 7s are 14. So 7 goes into 15 twice. And because that gave me an answer of 14, and here it's 15, I've got a gap, or a remainder, of 1, which goes here. Now it's 7s into 10. Well, 7 goes into 10 once, with a remainder of 3. And that 3 goes on the next number. It doesn't matter it's after the decimal point. It still goes on the next number. 7s into 35. Well, 35 is in my list. It's the fifth one down. 7s into 35 go five times. There's no remainder, so I can stop apart from. The decimal point here needs to appear up here as well, directly above it. So my answer to this question is 321.5. Remember, 0.5 is the same as a half. So if you wanted to, you could have written that down as 321 and a half. Either of those are correct. The next question, question 11, was an adding up question. It was asking you to add up 28, 2097 and 497. If you're adding up, it's useful to start with a big number first, the 2097. Don't jam the numbers in too close together. Give a bit of space. So I've got that number in my sum. Next biggest number is 497. I'm writing that down and I'm making sure I line up my columns. Everything's levelled off on the right. Now I need my 28. And now I'm going to add these together. 7 add 7. If 
you need to use your fingers, use your fingers, but that will work. You will get it right. 7 plus 7 is 14. Add another 8 is 22. 22. 9 and 9 is 18. And 2 is 20. And this 2 is 22 again. 22. 0 and 4 is 4. And that 2 is 6. Here, there's a 2 and nothing else. So there we go. That's the answer to that one. 2,622. Question 12 was 200... Actually, I'll put it on the screen. It will be easy for people to see. Question 12. Just bear with me. Was 200,412 taken away from half a million? So this question, as well as testing taking away skills, was also testing can you convert word type numbers into normal numbers. 200,000. 200,000 is that. It's 200,412. 412 is that. So I've got 200,412. They need adding together. So move that 412 down here. Add these together, you get the 200,412. Key thing was, I had my 200 and 1,000 is three noughts. So I got the question written down up to there, 200,000. Then I wrote down 412, put it underneath, added it together. That is the number 200,412. Then I got to do half a million. Well, one million has six noughts. So one million is that number. Half a million. If you don't know what it is, half of something, you divide it by two. So we could actually do that number divided by two. Two into one won't go. The one goes here. Two into ten goes five times. Two into nothing, nothing. Two into nothing, nothing. Two into nothing, nothing, and again and again. There's your answer. Half a million is this number here. It's five followed by five zeros. It's 500,000. So the sum I've got to do here has got to take this number up here away from this number. So I'm doing 500,000 take away 200,412. So here we go, 500,000 take away 200,412, and I'm doing it as a taking away. So, with a taking away, I've got to start here and do nothing, take away two. I can't take two from nothing, it's not big enough, I've got to borrow. Now this is a bit of a pain, because you can't borrow from here, which is where you'd normally go. You can't borrow anywhere apart from over here. So what you do in this question, you borrow one from here, you knock that number down by one, that's what you always do, and the one you borrowed, you put here. Now there's 10 here, I can borrow one from here. So that 10 gets knocked down by one to a nine, and the one I borrowed goes there. Now I can borrow one from here, so that 10 gets knocked down by one to nine, and the one I borrowed goes here. And then I can repeat that, borrow one from there, put it there. Borrow one from there, put it there. And once I've done that, I can then do 10 take away 2 is 8. 9 take away 1 is 8. 9 take away 4 is 5. 9 take away nothing is 9. 9 take away nothing is 9. And 4 take away 2 is 2. So there's the answer for that one. 299,588. 299 588. And this video will now be continued in part four.